Hey guys, even here and New York Pro wrapped up last night and we got some really interesting results. I'm sorry for not making this video earlier, it was 5am last night over here when the show finished, but today we got a scorecard as well and we got some surprising results. I gotta say, I was not expecting for it to be this close between Nick Walker and Martin Fitzwater. In my video of the prejudging, yes, I said it was close, but I said Nick Walker is still winning, convincingly. However, he won by a single point, meaning only one judge decided who is gonna win this show. Almost half of all the judges thought that Martin was supposed to win the New York Pro and Nick was supposed to play second here. How crazy is that? In my comments, some of you were like, are you blind, are you drunk, and so on, Martin is not close, lol, and stuff like that, but apparently he was close. Honestly, I was really surprised that so many judges had Martin winning this. But I have a pretty good idea why this was the case, and I'm gonna go pose for pose, but before that I gotta say, Nick Walker is a top 3 Olympian. What does this mean for Martin? If he's this close to the best version of Nick Walker ever, and this was the best Nick Walker of all time, it absolutely was. He was significantly improved from the last time we saw him on stage. Everything was just better. The details in the quads were better. His midsection control was perfect. Even in the front shots, he looked better than ever before. In the front double and front lat, I would say absent ties as well, probably. So midsection was not an issue, not at all. Conditioning was right where it needs to be. He doesn't need to be any leaner than this. Could he be leaner? Maybe he was a little bit leaner, a drier at the Arnold Classic, but he lost too much fullness that show. Here he was blasting full, like the 2022 Mr. Olympia, with better conditioning and with a significantly improved back. His back was never this big and this wide. I don't think his glutes and hamstrings were ever this detailed. Even when he was drier at the Arnold Classic, still, he didn't have the pop that he has now. Everything just looked so much better. It was by far the best Nick Walker we ever saw. Don't even try and argue with me in the comments about this. This is a fact. And Martin, he was never even close to this kind of look. Detroit Pro had some really good lighting, so he probably looked better than he would look if he was competing here with the same condition. But here, everything was just very transparent, very visible, the lighting was okay, but it was still noticeable that his condition here was better, and also he was fuller at the same time. Just overall the best Martin Fitzwater we ever saw. I would say his conditioning was maybe a little bit better than Nick's, but Nick is just that much bigger and his details look even more exaggerated. He has like better muscle maturity, I guess, or I don't know what it is, but he has like more details showing. What the hell is Martin doing for these kind of hamstrings and glutes? Is he a big deadlifter? If you guys know, comment down below, tell me, because I want something like this. I mean, he kind of looks like somebody who is deadlifting heavy. I don't know how else can you obtain uh, hamstrings and glutes like this, or lower back as well. Here he was showing his strengths that are basically Nick's weaknesses, of course, the legs and the waist size. And those two points are the reason why so many judges had him placing above Nick Walker at this show. Now let's go back to the comparison and let's see which pose is Martin may have won against Nick Walker. So from the side, you can see the size difference, the thickness difference. Nick is definitely much thicker, but then you take a look at the midsection. Even though Nick had it in control, Martin's is just smaller. And Nick can hide it at that point to make it look smaller than Martin. Here, also, like, even though Nick has great abs, you can just see how much smaller Martin's waist is. He doesn't have the deep details in the legs like Nick, but his leg to waist ratio is much better. Most muscular, you would say Nick is beating this one easily, but actually not really. Just like any other front shot, the midsection is coming to play, and Martins is just much, much smaller, and his fullness to the chest and shoulders and arms as well was really good, surprisingly good. So it's not only the waist, obviously, it's like everything else. Martin was not on Nick's level of muscularity, no, but he was close enough, surprisingly close. Plus, then, the midsection, the flow, the, the, the quads, the proportions and symmetry, the skeletal structure. Because of that, he was able to match Nick in some front shots, like this one, front double. Now, as far as front lat spread, I gotta say, Nick improved it a lot. I don't know if it's just a posing difference, but it definitely did look much better. But if you compare it to Martin, you can see the glaring weakness of Nick Walker, and that is his waist size. Midsection is okay. 
He was controlling it perfectly, but, you know, structurally, simply, he cannot hide the size of his waist, not that much. No, this is what was very, very interesting, so Nick Walker is basically known for his uh, back shots. He can hide his waist size in the back shots. His hamstrings are one of the best hamstrings of all time in bodybuilding. He's always conditioned from head to toe, so his glutes are always in, and his back came up big time this year. It was good before, but now it was much, much better. And you would think that Martin has no chance against Nick Walker in these shots. However, Martin was really freaking good in this. I mean, I knew he had a great back, but I thought this back is gonna match against Tony Burton better than versus Nick Walker. However, you could argue, you could make a, you could make a case for Martin having a better back than Nick Walker. Especially upper back. Look at the traps. Look at the lower and the upper traps. Also, Martin's back looks more 3D. Again, he's reminding me of Phil Heath. It looks like his back is popping out of the screen. Nick's back is pretty flat. It's very wide, it's detailed, and his arms are adding to the illusion a lot, but the back itself... I mean, Martin's is just bubbly. It's, it's round, it's popping out. And it's gotta do something with posing, I'm pretty sure. I think he really knows how to hit it. He knows how to bend his back without tilting his hips too much. And it's really difficult to learn how to do that. Uh, Phil Heath was doing this phenomenally. And also Chris Bumstead did it that one year when he had that crazy back transformation. Sure, his back progressed a little in the offseason, but not that much. Not really. It was posing more so. And you can see here with Martin, yeah, his back is phenomenal, but I think he really knows how to hit this shot. Also, Martin's hamstrings... I mean, you can't match Nick's hamstrings. Nobody has hamstrings like this, man. Nobody has this kind of size from behind in the lower body, but... I don't know, I don't know, Martin is different. And maybe more detailed, maybe drier. Maybe you can see more of his fibers in the hamstrings. Also, glutes, completely different shape. Martin has glutes kind of like Phil Heath again. I don't know geometrically how do you call this shape, but it's kind of like butterfly shape. You know what I'm saying? It's different. Nyx is like, kind of like a square. Martin's shape is just crazy, and those upper glutes also are showing. I know some people don't care too much about glutes, but it's not like calves. I mean, glutes are the biggest muscle in the body. And from behind, they're really adding to the illusion. Just think of Ronnie Coleman with his crazy glutes. So I would say he was beating Nick in that area, and also, like, the hamstrings were so detailed, so crazy, man. This was just... I don't know. This was... I mean, I, I prefer his back double bicep here. I know Nick is bigger... And maybe Martin's got the angle a little bit, he's closer to the camera, but the shape of it and everything, I don't know, I don't know, very, very interesting comparison, very, very interesting. In the back lat spread, Martin is not as good as in the back double bicep, and Nick was also not that great before, but he improved so much. Look at, a, look at the width of his freaking lats here, Nick's, wow, wow. Martin is rounding up that back a little bit too much, if you ask me, in this pose, so he's kind of losing on that width. Yeah, he's gaining some thickness in the lower back, but is it worth it? In my opinion, no. I think he lost this shot. As far as the back double, I don't know. It was close. And as far as the side shots, I don't know, man. I mean, Nick has crazy, crazy thickness from the side. Martin is not that thick, but even though it was from the side, Nick was able to keep his midsection tight, you could still see the difference. Martin's waist just looks smaller from every angle, basically. Not from behind. But from the side and from the front, yeah, especially from the front. I mean, take a look at this again. Huge difference, huge difference. This was an interesting moment. Nick went crazy here and he showed to everybody how much muscle, how muscular he actually is. And based on that, I have no problem with Nick winning it. I thought he was gonna win it, but if Martin won it, I wouldn't have a big issue with that, honestly. I can see arguments for that as well, but I think Nick deserved it, so props to Nick. But again, what I'm wondering is, what is gonna happen at the Mr. Olympia? What does this exactly mean for Martin Fitzwater? Who is more likely to make more progress before the Mr. Olympia? I don't know if Nick can make any more progression. I think he's as good as he's ever gonna get. I think this is a peak of his physique, of his career, I don't see any changes he can make without ruining his waistline. I don't see it. And Martin, this is only his fourth show, I believe. Texas, Arnold UK, Detroit, and this. So I think Martin is way more likely to progress until the Mr. Olympia, to get better. If that happens, what's gonna be the result? 
where will Martin place? Can he be in the top three instead of Nick Walker? Can he surpass him? And, I don't know, Samson? Can he go against Derek and Hadi at the Mr. Olympia? <laughs> I don't know, man. I was not expecting this kind of result. This was wild. Now, here in the scorecards, you can see I highlighted Nick's name and Martin's name. And you can see that Martin had 5 points in the pre-judging and the finals, while Nick had 4 points. So, very, very close call, extremely close. It could have went the other way very, very easily. Now, as far as the 3rd and 4th, obviously, Tony O'Burton was 3rd. I highlighted him, actually underlined him in green. And as you can see, he has 9 points, both pre-judging in the finals. Beef Stewart didn't underline, he's above Nick Walker, he had 24 points in total. And Christian Wolski had 15 points, 13 total. But there was also no question of Tonio beating Martin. I mean, I knew that Martin is gonna get a good look, because he was at the Pittsburgh Pro, he was in the Steve Weinberger's gym, practicing posing with him. But to beat Tonio this much, with so many other judges judging this show... I couldn't predict this, and I couldn't predict where Quinton Araya is gonna play. So apparently, he managed to get into the top six. How is this even possible? I have no idea. Because originally, he wasn't in that top six callout. He was in the second callout. But then they pulled those two guys from the first callout into a separate second callout. So he was there, he was battling. I thought there is no way he can beat all these guys. I underlined him in blue, so he got 36 points in total, and I underlined uh, in red Tim Budesheim and Angel Calderon, and they both got 44 points, but Tim won uh, in prejudging, and that's what counts more, so he placed higher in 7th, and Angel went all the way down to 8th. This is definitely not something I could have seen based on the judging. I had Christian Wolski in 5th, but I thought Angel was for a reason in that first callout, but I guess he faded in this in this round right here. I didn't really notice it, I didn't see it. But I guess that's what happened because Quinton beat him quite convincingly. I didn't know about Tim versus Quinton because yeah, Tim's structure is not that good and Quinton's is like the best structure in this entire show potentially. But he simply doesn't have the size and Tim has all the size. So I thought that was the battle for 7th. I thought uh, Quinton might place 7th or 8th, not... 6th, but apparently he beat Angel Calderon. Was this right? I don't know. I honestly don't know. I usually don't doubt the judges, but I feel like they gifted him this spot. I think he should have placed lower. Lower than Angel. Simply because he looked like a classic bodybuilder next to him, next to these guys. He needs a lot more muscle, man. He definitely needs to progress a lot more. What is the problem? I don't know. I noticed the comment, which has a lot of likes. Somebody said that they watched uh, Quinton's videos and that he's not training very hard. He never goes to failure and so on. So I don't know if that's it. But, you know, he got really big in the offseason. Somehow he dropped so much weight and he looked much, much smaller than I thought he would look. However, he managed to get to the top six. So it's not that much of a disaster. If he was eight, that would be just horrible. After putting so much work into this to place that low, it would be really horrible for him, but uh, at least he got that 6th. So, is he gonna get to the Mr. Olympia by winning another show? Only if this was a flatness issue. If he can, I don't know, fill out and look much bigger with the same condition, then sure, maybe. But it's very difficult to say. 6th here. And Beef Stew was 4th. He also looked amazing. He looked great. Uh, he could have been sharper. So if he can improve this conditioning, he might even have a chance of beating Tony O'Burton and getting that Mr. Olympic qualification. So I think next show is California Pro. Martin, of course, is not gonna do it. There is no reason for it. Nick Walker just qualified here. And we have Tony O'Burton probably doing that show, trying to qualify for the Mr. Olympia. And Beef Stew is most likely going to be his biggest challenge. Just like last year, these guys were battling for this New York Pro win. And of course, Tony won. Beef Stew plays second. But Beef Stew did a couple of shows later and his conditioning looked worse and worse. So hopefully this year it's going to be the opposite and uh, he's going to improve. And I think he has a good chance of beating Tony, but he needs to come in super, super shredded. He has the size. He's a big guy, but it's most likely going to be Tony who wins the next show. Anyways, guys, once again, Nick Walker wins. Very close second for Martin Whitzfotter. Whatever your guys' thoughts are, tell me in the comment section down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. For more videos like this, guys, stay tuned, subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. All the best and bye-bye.